almost half of venture backing for AI startups went to startups here in the city of San Francisco. Do you, do you recognize that as being a genuine trend, the concentration of AI talent here in the city? Yeah, I think it's a reflection of how early we are in this market. There is great engineering and entrepreneurial talent all around the world. Um, I've been on the boards of startups, uh, you know, with Israeli founders, European founders, um, all around the United States. But in at this particular moment, AI and this generation of it is very early, and a lot of the talent that was sort of working on the frontier of this technology was focused in a few large research labs, and um, those those labs were staffed in San Francisco and London mainly. So I do think that, you know, the AI boom has benefited from that research talent and uh, is partly also to do with sort of the renaissance of San Francisco. I ask you that because you and I have spent time together in your offices. You, you know, you, you launched Conviction and you opened a physical office space. But since last we spoke, you also launched Conviction Embed, essentially an accelerator for, for AI startups. Tell me about that. What, what prompted the move? So we think this is a unique moment in time. As um, we were just talking about, this is a very early stage of the AI market. And we want to bring people together at this uh, frontier of technology because we think they are solving a lot of new problems. Um, and some of those problems are very common, right? Um, and so an example might be, Hardware and infrastructure is hard again for startups. Thanks to, the, thanks to the cloud players, they haven't been hard for most startups for a long time. But if you are a company that needs to train or serve your own models, that's very challenging, right? And, um, and so, you know, people talk about the AI GPU crunch. Uh, and, and so one of the things that we were really trying to do is focus on the set of challenges that AI native companies face, bring people together who want to work at the vanguard, and then also make it possible for companies to experiment, right? And so we're giving people enough capital to get going, $150,000 on very friendly terms, and then partnering with Microsoft, OpenAI, Anthropic, and Base10 in order to sort of make it possible for people to experiment as well from the hardware side. And so I think it's in part because we think this is a really special moment in time. We want to bring together some of that Vanguard community and in part because we think we can bring our network together and people will solve unique problems together. So today's actually the last day of application. So AI entrepreneurs, I hope you'll apply. Well, let, let's linger on that for a moment then. What is it that you're looking for? You know, if, if you are going to get a new wave of applicants that are watching Bloomberg Technology right now, how do they set themselves apart? What is it you're seeking to to unearth? Yeah, I, I think the fundamental thing that we are looking for with any entrepreneur, besides the core entrepreneurial tra traits of you know um, grit, uh, the enthusiasm and deep understanding of a particular problem space, is actually uh, experimentation today like openness to new ideas and new experiences. And I think a more expansive view of the markets that can be disrupted with AI and, and then sort of deep understanding of how the research and technology apply. I think one of the most exciting things about the opportunity to us is the fact that the we don't look at the markets that are available to AI as just traditional software companies. Like um, some of the most interesting companies in AI today, and I'm biased because these are some of our portfolio companies as well, but you know, if you look at companies like Harvey in the legal space or Midjourney in the um, image generation space, those were not hotbeds for software innovation as verticals prior, right? And so we're really excited about people who you know, are experts in their domain and then also are thinking creatively about these applications versus sort of just expecting that these next generation of companies will be a direct replacement for incumbents. You know, Conviction's really focused on the early stage, but you know, I know you and Elad on the No Priors podcast have names from the world of AI working at some of the biggest and most mature technology companies to discuss some of the broad themes. What are the advantages of focusing on young, early startups rather than you know, those more mature, sometimes mega cap, tech names that are still pumping money into, into AI development? 
Well, I'm sure there's an updated increased number for Q2, but I think your viewers would definitely know in Q1, uh, a fifth of the S&P 500 mentioned AI in their earnings calls, right? And so right. I do think since the starting gun of last November, uh, technologists at companies of any scale recognize the opportunity and the risk. Uh, and, and definitely some are benefiting from it, right? You know, we see even in our... Uh, me and a lot more advanced portfolios or even in public companies, there are founders and CEOs who are taking advantage of the opportunity and motivating their teams to work with um, more speed and velocity than they ever have. It, incumbents have always had the advantages of distribution, like relationships with customers, um, and then like very you know large resources, right? Engineering teams, access to infrastructure, for example. But I think these times of massive disruption are actually more advantage to startups. Uh, I, I think there's a lot of discussion amongst investors about access to data to train and fine tune models. But the data you want for model fine tuning and training is actually very specific and, and incumbents often don't have it. So I think it's a, you know, it's a race like many other um, technology shifts where startups are trying to build the best product and build distribution. Uh, and incumbents have the distribution advantage and are trying to figure out how quickly they can adapt to this new change. Last October, you, you came out and, and confirmed your first $100 million fund. And you got going quite quickly. And we talked about the physical space that you have, the offices. But just share with our audience, Sarah, what it's been like building your own firm from scratch where you've been able to make progress quickly, what, what the challenges have been as well. Yeah, I am reminded what it is like to be a founder. It's a lot of work, uh, I'll be honest. But I, I'm really excited. I think the, the timing of our fund launch was, um, we, we uh, launched it publicly last October, and ChatGPT was released to the public in, I, I think, November. And so I can't say I was not surprised by how... Um, strong the consumer and enterprise reaction was to that, where like this is the race year to incorporate AI into your existing products as an incumbent company, right? Um, and, and so I, I'm, I'm positively surprised by how many entrepreneurs and how much great opportunity we are seeing. And I, I think, you know, we have a, um, I think we have a reputation for domain expertise and network here. And we, um, want to go work with some of the very best companies and I'm very proud of the entrepreneurs already in the portfolio. Um, but I'd say the amount of opportunity is also a challenge, right? We're hiring investors and um, I, I think it will only grow from here. And so and I'd say perhaps the challenges look a little bit more like any scaling company that doesn't quite have enough people because its market has arrived quickly.